All right, so next video, probably as the title says, I haven't made it yet, but the plans for the 101 engines, and I don't know if we're going to get into the cart parts or not of what came with these, but so what we're going to do is get inside these engines, at least pop the heads off or look at the cylinders and everything, and they're sitting on the other side of the camera here, and figure out what's going on, what the plans are, and why these engines stopped being used. Because on the last video of the unboxing, if you didn't do that, check that out. You're going to want to see everything that came in that box. All the 101s and why they got put out of service. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's do that. <laughs> So, as we saw, there are four of these engines right here. This is a tagged and confirmed 101B. This one does not have a tag on it, but shares the same dimensions. And according to Mike Nolan, the A, 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 and B share the same port timing. So, we'll have to figure that out. Believe it or not, off camera, I said, hey, let's just see if this has spark. And this one still has spark. As it sits, I have done nothing to it. So, a really hot spark. So, this one was running when it got put up. And we'll look into that. This one right here, uh, it's missing the piston and connecting rod for some reason. So, we're going to look into that also. And this one right here, I can already tell you, somebody had a uh, was running way too rich of an oil or was not cleaning it and it had been bored out before and pretty much what's going on with that one is inside the grooves of the piston it looks like it was just carbon just completely destroyed this thing somebody was just running like way too much 30 weight or didn't update any oil or maybe it was coming through from the oil pump into the cylinder and it just completely ruined it the rings are stuck into the piston via carbon and stuff like that so this one was not they were not very well taken care of when it came to running this one looks like it did come from the pacific northwest though and we're going to keep this salt as is put it back together at some point but i want to paint it i think i want to do that with it so what will end up happening with that one it'll probably wait till springtime to do unless I can get it painted sooner or powder coated. I really want to go for the powder coat actually. And this one also had spark too. I just slapped the uh, flywheel on the eyeball on the key and it had it. So it was running before it had got put up, but I want to take its head off, which go in a little detail here. You can see the custom job that had to be done to a cart head to fit the rear anti-vibration mounts on it. So they had to weld it on. It might've been overkill, but weld it on and this, Mind you, it was probably done back in the 70s. And they had to do that. They had to put the holes up here for this rubber provision and everything where the tag would be. So the tag is missing on this one also. But the exhaust port on it, on the other hand, is not bridged. And I haven't even taken the flywheel nut off. So this might be a 101. It is a 101, but it could be a B. Um... It looks like it might have been bored out at one point or another. Turn on the light here on the camera for you guys. That actually turned out pretty good. So you can see those boost ports back there. That and that. So also, you know you got it because of those. But you can see the piston pin here, and it's suspected that's a Waysco piston, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, the bore has is, it's got cross hatching in it still, and it's lubricated, not by me. So it just looks like severe carbon buildup was happening right here and you can feel that and it's on the exhaust port real bad and then the rings are just carboned in really bad so it's gonna need a new piston maybe the bore cleaned up i can see where it had been needled once down there at the bottom you see on those uh, transfers down there how they have the little horns on them above my thumb there i know it's hard for it to focus but 
it had lost needles before and been bored out and that's a t that's a very typical sign of that so but it ran after that and everything and it looks like it's just with this case right here just somebody ran it way too rich <clears throat> on oil so that's why it's important to run correct type of oil and don't overdo it i know i say oil's cheap rebuilds aren't but you can overdo the oil or if you just simply don't get in and clean your exhaust ports and stuff like that. So that is another thing that can happen. So there's a fine balance between too little oil, too much oil, or your tune's just super fat. And I have the carburetor in the tank still out in the kitchen where we did the video for the unboxing. And I have not touched the adjustments, so we'll find out where the adjustments were on that too. And if it was running a lot of oil or old stuff, the carburetor could still be filled up with a bunch of that. So, And also it could have just been wood dust because there, no, uh, there was no air filter when I got to it, whether somebody robbed it of the air filter or something. So who knows? But so there's that for that one right there. I want to get into that one at some point here this one too and this one i it might be first to be on the build list of what we do and everything based on that because i said i want to do a 797 790 style tank and everything uh build and this engine would fit that time period much better so that might come first and i don't plan to repaint that or anything if i did it would just be black topped and everything wrinkled black and that's pretty easy to do even in the winter time i just kind of torch the metal hit it with paint and it just wrinkles up and that vht valve cover stuff is wonderful so we'll have to get that shroud off of there on the head this one right here um another case of somebody ran it lean or whatever lack of oil and the top of the piston here right there is just damaged. It's like it chipped right off or something and broke, but it did not damage the bore, but there's aluminum transfer like mad right here. So it, uh, just one of those, somebody ran it lean, probably ran alcohol or whatever through it. You know, that's just how it was back in the day. And, uh, somebody dirkoed the uh, wire back on too to make sure it wouldn't fall off. So this looks like it was used strictly for carting application. Uh, yeah, this had never seen a chainsaw before because I don't think I see a hole. Yeah, there's no hole for the oil rod unless they ran it without it and just ran automatic, but I screwed it down. So this one had only ever seen carting application and I'm gonna assume the same for this one too back here. This one back here does have a needle mark and it's very light. Uh, move. Uh, two transfer spots. This one looks like I also ran triple carburetors because of that. There I have, like I said, I have not done anything. I just lightly touched up that. So this one has one needle mark right up there, and it's very, very shallow. Usually uh, those are hard to clean up. It could take off a ton, but uh, that one might clean out with just a, a boring, and I'll have that taken to Terry. All these will be in Terry Ives' hand at some point, so... We'll go ahead and we'll take the uh, thingamajig here because I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Caliper. There we go. Digital caliper. This isn't the greatest for measuring everything, you know, down to stuff and whatnot, but it gets down enough to tell me where our specs are. So we'll find out what the bores are here real quick. And factory, these are 2.280. And this one looks to be 20 over. So that means... Plenty of meat left on that one. Plenty of meat. So that's good for that. I know this one back here is already 20 over because it's on the piston. And it also confirms the measurement is the same. Pretty much. Yeah. 20 over. And it's on the piston, which I was happy to see that. And you can see it right there, the 20 on top. So that's 20 over. Now I'll quickly get inside this one, because I'll just put it back together. The Super Pro one. We'll get into hit it here real quick and uh, check out where it's at, board over and everything. I do want to keep that engine original to, to that frame and everything, just because 
there was some guy who probably made a heck of a living off of this, and this all was his livelihood. So I would assume. So all right, I'll get into that. We'll get the head off real quick, and we'll take a peek. I had to put her in the vise. I don't know why I kept this flywheel on there. All right, put her in the vise to help hold it while I break all these loose. And you can tell somebody didn't have the right hardware. So, uh, head gasket's still there. It didn't look too bad. The bore is, uh, Does that help? No, that makes stuff worse. Maybe. So, no. boop. The bore is clean. I mean, you know, it's got aluminum transfer happening. So, and a dead bug in there. <sighs> Little dirt fell in. I see. Let me see here if I can see a number if there is any on the top of this piston real quick. Helps to turn it to top. Oh Lord, look at the slop. Side to side but it ain't bad, but that way. Oh man, this almost feels like it's a homemade piston oh yeah it was running up some carbon for sure that's how you increase the compression I don't see anything on this this looks almost like it was like brought to a machine shop and somebody made something to fit or close to fitting all I see is just a swirl mark from the machining on the top. This thing was just running pig rich. Oops, sorry, you guys. I keep smacking you. Like a bad scratch off ticket right here. Good gravy, this is what caused it to fail. Just running so much oil and the carbon build up and the dirt. <sighs> that didn't come from sitting, because it was sealed up pretty good. That's just straight up burning way too much. So the piston's not giving us any tell of uh, what the size is over, but find out here real quick make sure that's zeroed out zero I want to say 40 Ooh, I'm gonna say 50 bolt hole to bolt hole no that's just 20 over so there is another good candidate right there. She can live. So that that's 20 over. The bore could possibly be honed out by me and just a piston, but I want it to get done because I do feel that the wall has a little bit of crap on it or dug in slightly. So that'll be probably taking 30 to 30 over tons of meat left on it so we can take that the 30 over have terry do that one 30 over so that one lots and lots of life left on it mind mind you i have one outside that has 80 over and it runs but 80 is about the limit i go i've heard of guys going 90 even a hundred or a tenth over so yeah tenth of an inch over so yeah or however people want to pronounce it so all right so that one right there uh, we'll just kind of put that to the side for a minute. So, it doesn't have any needling. That is good. Oh, yeah. Was it even ported? No. No porting either. Just standard. So, it looks like it went from stock to 20 over. 
because it tossed some needles and everything on the bottom. So we can see right here, there's uh, marks again. I just love how it decides it where it wants to. Well then focus in there, there we go. So those are your needle marks, how you know one chucked one, and it, it, they run just fine. They don't, it isn't gonna affect anything. Or if it does, it's so stupid minute, you're not gonna notice, so. That one is only, no hold on, no, 30, no, 20, 20, 30, no, 28 plus. No, they might be 40 over, am I doing my math wrong? No, no I'm not, no, cause 28 and then that, yeah, so, so 20 over. All right, let me get the shroud off this last one here, and we will go ahead and uh, see what goodies this has. I'm told this one's a little harder to find, original MC-101, but I, I kind of see them everywhere, I guess. I don't know. Now I know also, other than the stamping and the bridge, there's your uh, removable boost port. And I self-proclaimingly say, which these, these have a different style head gasket on them, but also, I think that these are just a 797 with the head cut off because it has the removable boost port as it has the bridged exhaust and whatnot. So you could probably turn a 797 into one of these, even a CP, and you just cut out behind the coil and you can add this boost port in and really have some good power. So, um, all right, I'm yammering on. Let's go ahead and let's get that off real quick. Well, quick for you guys. Let me get her out of the vise here. But this, uh, this definitely, it only had two head bolts holding this on, this one on, so. All right, so this is the uh, other one. And there's a, a glob of what looks to be JB Weld on there, because there's something. No, it's definitely metal. So there might've been a decompression on this one at one time. So that's so what I'm talking about that these have a different head gasket that is non-existent on this one unless it's you know because these are supposed to have a flat style or whatever so I don't know unless they just decided to remove it completely anyways so two bolts holding that one on it definitely had a decompression in it at one time because you can see the welded up crap and everything, so we might get that cleaned up, or... But you can... Ah, yeah, it's just a bolt. You can see the difference in the combustion chambers between them two. This was one of the next... This is one of the other things that made them different. When you go to pick out your heads and everything, the combustion chambers. I've seen people... There's the original head gaskets or a type of them for these was a giant aluminum one. And then later they went to this thin copper ring style right here. But you can see the difference in combustion. And that was your big power differences right there. And the MC-101 had, had a much larger combustion chamber versus the later had a smaller for more power. That's a, another way of indicating what this one also is, too. Not saying it wasn't swapped, but I can tell it wasn't. So, that's that. Head gasket's completely missing. So, why were you put out of service? And it's not immediate. So, if you could take the head off of a 797, this is what it would look like. Bridge port, exhaust port, everything looks clean in there. I mean, that bore is stinking clean. I doubt it's even been taken over. Somebody robbed it of the connecting rod and the piston and just put her back, and that's fine. They didn't have to take it all the way apart. So the bottom end might have been off of it. I'm pretty sure it was, because, no, whatever, to get the connecting rod bolts. Welded crankshaft keyed and tapered big part tapered must be tapered and the bearings are crusted but that's perfectly fine and they look like they're original yeah those are original mccullough bearings too so this engine might be 100 original and then there's your boost port right there 
Some few people get to see that. That's something you don't see too often is the boost porting done. As it focuses in. So you remove that. Fuel comes up. The piston has a slot. Comes up and over. And then as it's pushed down, everything gets whooshed up and stuff like that. It's just another port for fuel to get stored into, put into the cylinder, and big kaboom boom. So, and then later on, McCullough just got rid of the uh, that and just integrated into automatically. So, all right, let's get to measuring the bore. I'm almost willing to bet this is a stock bore. Almost willing. But I'm not a gambling man, at least when it comes to money or anything. So, so 2.28, it was factory. And this will say. It is a factory bore. Yeah, because this oh yeah slides in perfect with that and everything. So this one has never seen a machining. So this is a 100% stock. And these are hard to find stock bore. So this one, you might be able to take a dingleberry hone to and just slap a piston into it. This one, and I know guys with standard pistons, so this one I might be able to save on my own. Um, I have a I have a honing. There's no rust in it. It's not rusted or pitted. It's just dirty. I mean, it's very very minimal surface rust. But that being a stock bore, I could run the hone through this one and. It'd be good. And I could just uh, hit up, uh, I could probably hit up Terry for a standard piston, but I know I know one guy, and then I know where there's really expensive ones at for this and everything. So I'll talk around and everything and see what I can find. But that being a stock bore makes me super happy, meaning I could save a couple bucks on this and not having to go get it machined. There's no need for it. But that also means. I got a lot of my own cleaning up to do, which is not a problem. But the crankshafts, on the other hand, I will be sending them out anyways to Mike Nolan. He is awesome. I already contacted him, and he said he would be happy to polish up some crankshafts for me. I'm also going to be buying a connecting rod off of him and everything, and he'll be shot painting that for me. So... He is super, super, super awesome. Great guy to know. He has helped out many people, has parts and stuff. Well, does in quotes have parts and everything, but he's built, he builds, he really got into these max saws and everything awesome. So, you know, maybe I'll slap one of these stickers on one of the saws or something. Nar Nardog race saws. So awesome. Him and his wife and his brother absolutely love to uh, race these and everything, modify them and stuff like that. And, well, at least Mike loves to do that portion of it. He builds them for another guy and everything. So, there we go. Also, anybody know what Hegar, Hegar products are for carts and stuff? Hegar for products. I got a few things and got these. And I don't know. This might be a good test stand to keep to fire up saws and stuff on our engines and whatnot before putting them in. So, the goal ultimately for all of these is to have the blocks ready to go sitting like this minus the port job. Have them ready at the go to do. So, and Mike also ported this one. And the cutouts were already there for the V12 intake, but this one he this is his this is what the job looks like after he's done polishing it. A cut a, a crankshaft. And that is a billet rod. And everything in there this will be a full racing one so but uh that's the goal for all of these is have them ready sitting and ready and this is only 24 over so so plans are right now 790 style um the sp125 put it back together maybe another racing saw that I do all on my own on everything. Of course, that's in everything. Racing saw, just keeping it mild. 
I don't need to be the fastest methane racing guy in the face of the earth. No need for that. And maybe if I can find the parts, maybe a gear drive 101. I'd like an automatic oiler one, but if a manual oil box is all that's available, I'll take it. I gotta find a trashed out uh, gear drive, one that's just bad, ugly, it's no good anymore. Preferably the not, preferably the 180 style and up of those and everything. The 160s are cool, but I like the gas tanks on the 180 style. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, that might be a last one. We'll just see how things happen, how things pan out, so. All right, well, that might conclude everything. So we've got a stock, and then the other three are 20 over which is awesome news, and they can be cleaned up. New Pistons, 30 over, or whatever Terry can get me. So this one right here, I'm definitely trying to make first on this list to get it. I got a guy I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see about contacting about a, a 740. It's locked up, but it has the perfect body to fit this on. And the difference, why you kind of want to use a 797 tank versus a 740 is because this one does not have the D port. These blocks don't have a D right here. And everything where there was a second set of intake or whatever it and whatnot but uh so you'll have to completely on the tank itself block that off so that it doesn't have create any leaks or anything a huge it would have a huge air leak air fuel leak and stuff you pretty much it would never run so but finding a 797 tank good luck so i i'm rambling on so i just want to say thanks for watching Part two, the plans, investigation, and the plans on everything that was going on here and whatnot. And uh, if you want to continue seeing anything that goes on, on future things right here and this and whatnot, even any just weird chainsaw builds. I've got another one, a 90 series in the thought process of going. And that would be one of those quick make videos. Well, I say that. And just overkill firewood one. Just because you know what? Car engine, all the max saws. And you can put a hashtag on that. Hashtag car engine, all the max saws. So, so say thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. So that you can keep up to date on these future projects we have.